that they offer flexible working hours as well. But it's not always so easy for smaller companies to be able to juggle things, is it? Uh, no, not, not at all. Um, we do our best. Um, we, we attempt to be flexible, but at the end of the day, um, I, I feel a responsibility for the people that work with me, who have their own families and lives, have their bills to pay, and it's important that we operate uh, as a profitable business. I mean, that said, prior to this, I did work at um, very big uh, law firms, and whilst they may say about this and flexible and agile yeah. work, work in reality, is it was often frowned upon if you wanted to take that opportunity. So the reality is sometimes different to the promise, yes. ultimately. Yeah, OK. Let's bring in Mark Rice Oxley as well, who's a journalist at The Guardian. Morning, Mark. Morning. Uh, you've got three children between the age of 10 and 15, so you've had your hands full for some time. Uh, he's, and you've reduced your hours to four days a week. Uh, let me introduce you to James Mark, who's still with us. And Joe in Bournemouth is still there as well, aren't you, Joe? Yeah, um, yeah it'd, be, it'd be good if all three of you can, can talk about this and share your experiences as well. But Mark, how did you find it? What, when did you get to the point of reducing your hours? Hours. Oh, well, I, I took the decision as soon as my first uh, child was... <sighs> ...born that... Um, I was going to do things slightly differently. Um, my wife worked. Um, she wanted to get back to work. So I, to start with, I took a year off. Um, and I understand this will sound... And like, um, I, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to be in the position where I could take a, a year off unpaid to um, be the primary carer. And then, you know what, I just never really went back full time. I sort of, um, I was on a three day week for a while. I was on a four day week. Um, and I've heard what, what's been said about stigma this morning. And it's absolutely true. It does feel or it can feel to a new father that you'll be penalised, um, that you'll be uh, looked, you, you'll be uh, overlooked for promotion and that kind of stuff. But what I would say is that you just have to be bold. You just have to not care about that stuff for a bit. Um, you know, we're, we're going to live until we're, we're, we're into our 90s. We're probably going to work into our 70s. We can afford um, to take a few years to sort of power down and spend those really important years with our children when they're young. And I just wanted to put something back on, uh, to James, who I, I agree with, with a lot of what he says. It is different for small businesses. It is going to be different for many of the different uh, new fathers out there. But James, as the leader of your company, um, you know, you are setting the standard for everybody else who works for you. And don't, aren't you worried that, you know, some people who work for you will think, well, you know what, the boss works 60 yeah. hour weeks and never takes a day off. Um, I, I'd better do the same. Well, um Perhaps I don't work 60-hour weeks, but I, I get the point. Um, yes, there is a degree of flexibility. I think that the problem I have in, in managing my own work is really sometimes the urgency of a situation. You're called upon going to court tomorrow morning. That interrupts your family life. Um, and but perhaps my regret, you know, my children are teenagers now, is that you, you see them that they grow up so quickly. And you just, there's always that, I wish, I mean, I am a divorce lawyer. I come across lots of cases where marriages break down because of uh, people's work commitments and their life comes to an abrupt halt. Um, and they'll often start saying, you know what, I, I want to stop working so much. I, I want to have shared care of the children. And there are a lot of people who, who have that opportunity. So what I, I think is a problem is that our expectations of what fathers should do has changed enormously, but at the same time the sort of corporate business world is going in the wrong direction. There are more and more industries like James's where um, you, you, you can get a call and you have to be sort of, uh, you know, working till 10 one night and up at 7 or 6 the next morning, you know, it, we, we've, we've sort of... Get, get to the point where our um, sort of business rhythms are just completely out of cycle and out of sync with what, you know, the modern family needs. Can I just come in as well, guys? Yeah, Go ahead, Joe. Joe. Um, yeah, just listening to both of you chaps, I've got a feeling from the way you're both talking that you're both probably on quite good wages. And it's all relative. Like say, you had a, yeah, relative or not relative. And um, we're also discussing it's important that you know, the people that work for us, we look after them. But when do you put your family first? Because from my point of view, I think a lot of people out there need to really man up a bit and say, you know what, I'm not going to put my big company first. 
I'm going to put my family first. I'm going to put my children first. I'm going to make sure that when I turn around and I'm looking back over my life, that at the end of the day, I spent time with them. They knew who I was, and they didn't just see me when they got up in the morning before they went to bed at night. I completely agree. Sorry, James. I'll, I'll, yeah. I completely agree with Joe, and I think that the society we live in now, both parents have to work in order to be able to afford the ridiculous house prices in this country. Um, Childcare is, is extremely expensive. Actually, I think for a lot of people, it, it doesn't... Of course, it matters how much you earn, but for a lot of people, they'd be looking at the choice of either I um, work a few days less, sacrifice the salary, but save on the childcare. So it, it does end up being a real choice again. OK, well, look, we've, we, we've, got, we've got to leave it there. But, I mean, Ian makes that point that you were kind of making there, Joe, saying this is a phone-in for professional people only. Most of us earn to a level whereby we have to work as much as possible just to get by. You need to get real, says Ian. I think he's referring in general to the debate rather than any uh, individuals. But, you know, is it, is it a middle-class luxury that we're talking about here as well this morning? 85058 for your point of view. Uh, you can call on 0500 909 693. Thank you to Joe. Our thanks to Mark as well, Mark Rice-Oxley, and to James Maguire. Thank you very much to all of you.